My, my name is Harry Wilson, um, and I'm the Chief Executive of the South Wales Rapid District Council. Um, and I have with me our Mayor, um, Mr Eric Bayan. Um, we would just want to welcome you to this event. Um, it's a totally new experience for us um, doing this via and this method. Um, so thank you for those of you that have taken the time this evening to join us. The, it is difficult, um, this technology and bandwidth. Um, at any time we can have issues, so please bear with us if we experience any technical difficulties. We will get back to you. Um, please note that this session is being recorded and it will be available to view after the session itself. It will be on the same link which you use to join um, and attend tonight. So the format for the session, Alex and I will run through a summary of the annual plan consultation document and highlighting the key points. We'll then run through a series of questions and answers that have been submitted via email and we've put together some from the submissions. Often a number of the submissions have a lot of um, comment, so we're trying to distill from the submission and the essential question so that we can share that with people. Um, after that, we will move on to any questions and we would encourage you to ask questions um, that come through this evening. We look forward to being able to respond to those. At any time during the session, you'll be able to submit your question via the online tools. If you're using a desktop, the Q&A panel should be on the right hand side of your screen. If it isn't visible, you may need to click on the question mark icon on your toolbar. If you're viewing the session on your phone, you can submit a question by clicking on the question mark in the top right hand corner of your screen. When asking a question, please remember to include your full name. We won't be accepting any anonymous questions and the questions will be moderated. In essence, just to make sure that, um, that there's, there's nothing offensive or derogatory about people in the, in, the, in the question itself. So I'm sure no one will do, but just to be on the safe side. Um, because the questions will be um, there for everyone to see. Um, please be aware there's a lag between the video and audio segment of our session and the response to the questions being asked. We will endeavour to ask as many, answer as many questions as possible in the time frame allowed. We're hoping we'll wrap this up in an hour and a half, but obviously if people do have questions, we, we want to make the time to be able to give you a good hearing. A summary of all the questions and answers from this evening's session will be posted on our website after the event. Um, if, I just wanted just to remind in terms of submissions, and thank you, we've had over 380 submissions to date, um, which we're really pleased to receive. Some of them have not been uh, quite complete, so please add your name to the submission and click on the submit button so that we get your full submissions. Thank you. I'll now hand over to Alex to introduce you to the annual plan consultation document. Uh, thank you, Harry. Everyone, since I took office in October, the priorities for council have been relatively clear and really should come as no surprise to you all. We need to get our water sorted, drinking water and wastewater. Uh, and we need to, the cost to fix our water issues was not budgeted in our long term plan and therefore has to be accounted for in this year's annual plan, along with what other new initiatives or urgent work that we need to address. Part of this year's annual plan is the scoping and planning for a compliant, ecological, publicly acceptable long-term solution in Featherston with regards to its wastewater treatment plant. And the cost for this will be in the long-term plan, and this will be many millions of dollars. We also need to build the council's capability to deliver. This includes staffing, reviewing building needs, and improving systems and processes. This is an area that has suffered from serious underfunding in recent years. And in the recent election, our council's failings in this area were made clear, and we are fixing this, <clears throat> but it comes at a cost. One of the significant projects in this year's annual plan is indeed the Greytown Sports Grounds. It has become apparent we do not provide as much recreational land in Greytown as is currently needed and will be needed in the future, especially with the increase in land available through subdivision. The urgency shown by putting this into the annual plan instead of the long-term plan is due to the Greytown Trust increasing rentals 
causing a number of clubs to be unable to continue. If this situation was Greytown land being owned by council and Featherston Sports Clubs being about to fold, our response would be the same. We would support you. We have also proposed a worst case scenario here, so we don't have to reconsult if figures blow out. We would hope that the expense will end up less than we have proposed. Please bear in mind, we are only addressing urgent issues that cannot, cannot wait to the long-term plan ahead. With all this, we have realized that decades of underinvestment in council has led to a situation that needs addressing. Changes need to be made to avoid infrastructural and operational non-compliance. To address this, we actually needed a relatively hefty rates increase. But COVID has occurred, and we are aware, are aware of financial hardship many may, will, may encounter. We have proposed a plan with a 2.5% average rates increase thereabouts, <clears throat> offset with borrowing that will allow us to continue the improvements in economic, economic activity in the recovery, but also allow relief to ratepayers. None of what we propose is a done deal. Your submissions will change the proposal, but we have presented what we feel is a balanced option for the next 12 months, and we still encourage you to make a submission to guide us. We do apologize for this format of meeting. It's neither as interactive or as collaborative as a public meeting would allow, but we're trying to do our best in strange times. So there's a few points. If you could please keep your questions regarding the annual plan. This is what this meeting and format is for. And also please only ask a couple of questions each to allow everyone to have a chance of asking a question. Someone has described this meeting as painful and I will agree that it was at times. However, it's not easy in this format and we will not to con not continue trying to answer your questions just because it's difficult. OK, so over to Harry now to give an overview of the uh, consultation plan. Thank you. I'd just um, like to reiterate the statement uh, that Alex made. That this is a consultation document and we do ask that you take the time to read it. Um, we have received a number of submissions, particularly around the Greytown Sports Hub, Greytown Sport and Recreation Hub. There's an excellent paper that gives a very full summary of the pros and cons, the issues and the matters the council's considered, and we would urge you to read that. So starting from the top in terms of the annual plan, the first and most obvious priority for council is to get on top of our water supply, water demand, wastewater and stormwater issues. Water supply and safety and the safety of supply is crucial to not only our residents for their public health, our children, but equally it is, a, it is a serious issue for people who want to come and recreate and enjoy the great place that this, um, the South Wairapa offers. And there's nothing worse for our reputation than having an unreliable water supply. Well, we only need to look at the last year, um, 18 months, to see where we have not been able to provide that. In October last year, Wellington Water started um, working with us. Um, and can I say our thanks to Wellington Water for the work they have done to help us get on top of this issue. We've had multiple issues and they've responded well. The main issue that Wellington Water highlighted for us that none of our plants, none of our supplies in any of our towns are compliant with New Zealand's drinking water standards. We're not proud of that and we need to get on top of it and we need to fix it. We can't just do it in one year. So that this annual plan highlights the most crucial things that we need to get on top of and we'll be planning in a long-term plan, which again next year, to invest heavily to make sure we're paying, we're providing multi-barrier systems to provide not just one, but two forms of protection to our, to our towns. However, the supply of water and the safety is not the whole answer. We only have to look at climate change and the issues to do with resilience for water in the South Wairapa. So we need to be thinking about demand management, not just supply. So we're proposing to develop a water conservation plan. We haven't written it yet. We're just simply asking the question about whether this is something you think is important, and we welcome all and any ideas about what we could do. So part of that means using a whole lot of instruments, 
um, whether it's regulation, whether it's pricing, um, whether it's um, storage, a whole lot of options to actually manage um, the demand um, so that it relieves the supply pressure. Apart from water in terms of supply, we also, of course, have wastewater. Wastewater um, is often something that is out of people's minds, but is crucial in terms of protecting our waterways, keeping our waterways safe and protecting our moana. We've systematically over the past year has been moving to land disposal in both Greytown and Martinborough, and we are planning a wastewater disposal facility in Featherston. Um, we want the Featherston facility to be the best that we can possibly offer, recognising the greater hurdle um, and greater opportunity that we have to improve our environment. So wastewater and its disposal is something that's very crucial for this council to get right um, literally for our environment that we enjoy and the reasons that we live here in South Wairapa. We also have two other issues. We need to determine the future of water races um, over and make sure that we are making prudent decisions into the future about their use, their funding, and particularly who benefits from um, the services in that area. Again, the final thing in water is stormwater. So we do have hot spots. Um, we're not, unfortunately, the kind of small community that can afford an extensive stormwater system, but we need to make sure where there are issues that are on top of it and we have um, the systems that can respond to those. So moving on from some of the basic infrastructure, a community like South Wairapa is also about the places that people go, visit and use in our communities, our libraries, our swimming pools, our sports recreation facilities, our parks and our reserves. In the last year, we extended, in the last annual plan, we extended the swimming pool hours and we have a question whether we continue that for another year. There is a modest cost to doing that. And so we have a question about whether this is something that you would like Council to continue. Probably the most significant investment the Council um, is considering is, as Alex mentioned, is a sports hub and recreation hub in Greytown. And again, I would urge you to read the report fully on our website that looks at um, the issues and pressures in doing that. Council needs to make sure that we have a balance of facilities across all of our communities for all ages, all groups and all forms of recreation, whether it be reading in libraries, whether it be swimming and swimming pools I mentioned, and for young people and older people to participate in sport, um, but also in indoor um, activity. We do have a good balance um, in Featherston and in Martinborough. Greytown has enjoyed the benefit of a trust that has looked out on their behalf. The trust um, is no longer able to support um, some of the green space and that green space could be lost and sold into residential property unless council acts. So we have an opportunity that we um, want your view about whether we should take but we do need to be thinking about future generations and the growth in Greytown and our relative communities need to be getting ahead of the game as land prices escalate. We also in our community need to make sure that we maintain the assets that we've got. Um, we have sweated our assets um, probably to the point um, that we shouldn't have in the past and we need to catch up. So there is a lot of delayed maintenance that needs to be done on our buildings, um, to get them up to a suitable standard um, for community use. And again, in the community recreation spe space, we need to think about the vulnerable members of our community. We are lucky to have housing for some of our senior citizens. The, this housing needs maintenance and it needs to be brought up to the standard that's required for tenancy. Um, and so we do need to make sure that we are funding those appropriately. There is a negative, there's a negative balance in the reserve. In other words, the rent that we charge people for um, the, the use of them, even though it's a modest rent, does not keep up with the, the costs of maintaining the facilities. And we need to actually move our rentals in a very modest way to try and minimise um, that, that um, shortfall because the rate payers pay for that, that shortfall. So it's a finely tuned balance between trying to mix what um, the user should pay, but also being mindful of what the wider community contributes in doing that. So moving on from our community and recreation and our special places, 
A crucial thing about this um, this district is the amount of roading network um, that, we, that we have. We need to keep that investment up. So we need to make sure that we are maintaining and renewing our assets in a timely way. Again, um, our roads, often people do not think about, they drive over them, they may notice a pothole, um, but actually keeping the, on top of that is, um, is, a, is a finely balanced um, act. And we're, we're, we do have a good network, but we need to make sure that we're keeping on top of it. Part of keeping on top of it is also making sure that in our towns and, um, and, and around our roading, that we're um, putting a bit of money aside for forestry and trees. We use forests um, to actually maintain and hold some of the hillsides above our roads. Um, and so they're crucial for land stabilisation. So we do need to make sure that we are um, looking after the trees um, and replanting them as we need to do so. Also in our urban environments, trees, apart from the, the um, wonderful um, environmental um, amenity they provide, um, also um, and climate change, we need to make sure that we're looking after them, maintaining, trimming them appropriately. So we're putting a modest amount aside um, for um, that, that work. So we need your views of whether you see that as important. Again, um, it's not just all about where people drive. So we want to renew and extend footpaths across the district. Again, we're, we're not a, um, a council that can resource a lot of work. So we just need to incrementally do the priority areas and maintain the, um, the footpaths that we have. But we also need to be thinking about um, walking and cycling um, in, in that context so that we're actually encouraging people to get out and about in their towns. And that isn't just a matter of making sure that we build more footpaths or cycleways. We need to, obviously that we need to do that, but we need to make sure that we're putting them in the right place at the right time for the right journeys that people take. So we're asking your views about walking and cycling and how, how much and also where, um, and if that's important to do, because if we have a plan, then we know where the priority to invest and to do the work is. So um, apart from land transport, the other um, obvious area that council provides services is on waste. So we need to, again, um, rather than just pick up, um, drop off and move waste to landfill, um, which um, we need to, we, we do and we continue to do, we need to think about how can we minimise the amount of waste um, that people use. So making sure that we are recognising the climate change impact and the environmental impact in New Zealand around waste. So we're proposing to work towards developing um, a waste minimisation strategy or contributing to the continued New Zealand waste strategy um, through a number of initiatives that are outlined in the, in the proposal. Finally, um, sorry, the, um, the next area, um, obviously council, apart from just providing um, infrastructure and amenity and services, and um, we provide a number of regulatory functions. The regulation is always a finely balanced, um, but balanced activity, because it is often about where people live. So it's the nature of the subdivision that, that is allowed under the district plan. It's about where that subdivision can occur. Um, and it's also about managing growth and the environmental effects of growth and getting that right. So um, we need to review our district plan we're putting some money aside to do that. Um, again, we also want to make sure that we, rather than simply just looking at the district plan um, through a lens backwards, that we're planning forward. Of course, COVID-19 has introduced some very significant challenges in terms of what the future may look like in terms of where people live, work and play. We're already seeing a lot of people that would traditionally have gone over the hill <coughs> to Wellington contemplating working more remotely in our towns. So we do need to be thinking about um, the different ways that people will work, live and play. For that reason, we've actually paused this year while we're gathering information in terms of the economic and social dislocation and effects of what is essentially a recession and what that mean for our economy. It doesn't mean we stop, it just means we make sure we take advantage of the information that has been gathered by a multitude of agencies um, to inform our future plan. To this effect, we've also paused the Martinborough growth area 
um, where so we were doing those two activities, the spatial plan and the growth area in parallel. We are now doing them sequentially. So we again pause and think about the special character, particularly of Martinborough um, in this context and about how um, what the look feel of this town needs to be. And so that we get that right from the spatial plan that sets the blueprint for uh, the options to consider. The final thing in the resource management area is the Dark Sky Reserve. So the Dark Sky Reserve um, is a wonderful tourist opportunity to spread the, um, the tourism opportunity from summer right through the year by using the winter um, period to encourage tourist activity um, to um, the South Wairapa. Again, tourists aren't the answer to everything. Please don't sound like this. I, mean, I don't want to sound like that's the answer, just more and more and more. We need to finally balance that um, with the environmental effect the tourists bring. But one of the things to get the Dark Sky Reserve working, we need to make sure that we have completed an inventory of outdoor lighting and have a plan that requires all new builds to meet um, meet the, the lighting requirements that would suit a uh, reserve. It doesn't mean that we're going to have less lighting, it simply means that we have the right type of lighting across um, our towns to support a dark sky reserve. And the final thing is around a council itself, its staff, its offices. This council, when I talk over this council as CEO, um, I was surprised by the absence of some of the basic systems and processes um, that you would expect a modern council to have. Um, the COVID-19 has certainly thrown the need for those systems and processes um, into sharp relief. We had to send all our staff home and ask them to remote work. We didn't have the service, um, we didn't have the internet resources um, that we needed and we've had to build those uh, that capability quickly. Um, it's still a band-aid, it's not a long-term fix. For instance, our internet late basis, sorry, our website, um, as an example, is written in a code that was not been supported in, in the last eight years, it's a thing called Drupal 6, which I didn't even know existed, um, and was unable to provide even the most basic functions such as payment of transactions, which um, if people um, during COVID had wanted to interact with council, we just simply weren't able to provide the services that we would expect from a modern council. So building our capability, making sure that we have um, the balance of staff to provide the services to you and to provide the systems and processes that make us easy to do business with is a critical task for this council. So with those in mind, um, those are the key points. Again, I would I would um, highlight, we, we are, this is a consultation. We're asking your views on how much um, of this work we do, what's the scale and whether that is important to you or uh, your family or the wider generation. So we encourage you to submit. As I mentioned before, and I will mention again, um, please make sure that you do um, click the submit button and write your name so we're able to reply to you having considered you know, your, cons uh, your submission. So with those in mind, um, we have a number of questions that we've distilled from the submissions. Um, so I'll, I'll pass to Alex to um, read and then answer the first question. Alex. Thank you, Harry. Uh, I think the first question we have is from uh, actually an email, uh, especially for this uh, tonight's um, uh, meeting. It's a question from Lynn Sinclair Chapman. Uh, it is an, it's quite a long question, but it really distills down to uh, the Greyhound Sports Hub. So the question is, please provide a true meaningful reasons to South Wairapa District ratepayers for proceeding with the Greyhound Sports Hub. So, I mean, we have gone over a bit of this in the preamble, it, and there, this is a question of two parts. One is uh, the, the, an issue of two parts. One is the Kurunui Gym, which we're proposing a million dollars contribution with the Ministry of Education. This facility is to allow for use by all the youth in the Wairapa who are going to Kurunui. So it's not a Greytown specific project. It also allows that gym uh, to be built as a larger community area with a, a combined hosting. And, and, and we have, I have seen examples of this working very successfully through the Wellington region. And in particular, I visited Tawa, uh, where there is a marvelous cooperation between the community and a school gym. However, if that's not what you want, 
then we will listen to your submissions. I think it's an opportunity that we would be, um, it would be terrible to miss. The next one is the recreational land. There's uh, two parts to this. One is the uh, Greytown Rugby Club and also the Bowling Club, both of which have been in uh, the South Wairarapa's recreational land reserve for 100 years. However, we are now faced with a, a very limited time frame to react and face losing recreational land in Greytown. And I know times are tough and this is not the ideal time to be doing this. However, recreational land taken as a whole is sometimes able to be shared and sometimes it is specific to a particular town. Sometimes there is duplication, such as swimming pools and libraries. These are recreational land that is required for one community. And I, and to be honest, initially I was not in favour of this, but having read the submissions and read all the supporting documents, I have come around to thinking that it's a good thing for the South Wider Rapid to do this. So I do encourage you to read all the documentations before taking a view. Uh, there are a couple other parts to that. One I will address, one was regarding does anyone in the South Wairarapa District Council have a vested interest in this proceed proceeding? Uh, to my knowledge, there are no conflicts of interests at all, but to we will I will ask that question again of all people involved and post that question, uh, the answer to that on our web page to ensure you, uh, to, to assure you that that isn't the case. Um, so I will um, pass now over to the second question, which is for Harry. Thank you, Alex. Um, this question is from Ian. I hope you're out there, Ian. Um, he's asking some questions about the Featherson dog pound. So um, he's asked, the first question is relating to the suitability of the Featherson dog pound and whether it meets uh, the current minimum stand standards for animal welfare. The very simple answer is no, and it's something we need to address urgently. So the, um, he's now asked, um, essentially, what are we doing about it? So, and what's the time frames for the improvements to be made if not already completed? So what we are working currently with both Carterton and Masterton, we have two options on the table. Masterton provides a fully serviced dog pound. In other words, there are staff there 24 seven um, to make sure the dogs are looked after. Obviously there's a higher volume um, than we have in, um, in South by Rapper and um, Carterton than we do um, and, and sorry, Marston that we do in our small town. The second option is that we simply build a pound with Carterton that is not fully serviced, but obviously meets um, the, the regulatory requirements. There will be a facility for up to 20 dogs. Um, we've received the fe feasibility report for that already. We're just waiting for the feasibility report from Masterton so we can compare the cost benefits and options. Our intention is to um, is to try and get this fixed as soon as possible. Um, so within the next six months is to commence um, a project to actually get uh, the dog pound um, underway. Um, so the next question um, is to Alex. Thank you, Harry. A question from Daphne uh, Geisler. Question, what are the expected annual operating costs of the pro proposed sports and recreation hub? So that's again a question in two parts. With regards to the uh, rugby and bowls clubs, we would expect there to be no annual operating costs. It should be the responsibility of the clubs that are renting the land off council uh, instead of off the trust. With regards to the, uh, if we contribute money towards the Great Greytown uh, Kurinui hub, uh, hub uh, it would be a share of the expenses depending on what uh, community usage there is, and that uh, we're really not sure of that uh, until the, a final agreement has been reached with the Ministry of Education, if this proceeds. Thank you, Alex. Do you have a second question from um, Daphne as well? All right, we have to. Um, with regards to uh, the recreational hub funding, is this a capital 